Good morning, and welcome to the STJC Virtual Worship Service, where our pastor, Reverend Alvin Smith, and First Lady Reverend V. Smith, and the entire STJC family are so glad that you chose to join us today. The month of August is National Minority Health Month. Please be sure to get your annual health checkups and vaccinations as needed. Call a friend and go with them. For those of you that are returning to school, we pray God's protection upon you. Remember, we're still in a pandemic. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and get your vaccinations. We pray that something is said, sung, or presented that will encourage you throughout this week. Please feel free to like, share, and comment. Righteous Father, you promised us that whenever we called upon your name, you would answer us with your presence. 
we ask you to allow our praise and worship to be acceptable in thy sight. You've made us to understand that you inhabit the praise of your people. So in our gathering, let us feel you, refresh us in you, renew us, and allow us growth in you. We pray for the manifestation of your power and glory to be in our midst as we tarry in your presence. Reveal unto us the knowledge of the divine mysteries of your word that will transform our lives forever. Watch over your people in this place. Keep us, Lord, in the essence of your care. We thank you for all that you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, St. James. Our scripture today is from Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 18 through 22. You who are my comforter in sorrow, my heart is faint within me. Listen to the cry of my people from a land far away. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king no longer there? Why have they aroused my anger with their images, with their worthless foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. Since my people are crushed, I am crushed, I mourn, horror grips me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician here? Why is there no healing for the wound of my people? And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Here with Christ our Savior saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. so grateful for our partners in ministry. You make a difference. Your gift reduces the poverty footprint, provides meals for seniors, books for children, supplies for teachers, toiletries for veterans, thermometers for neonatal nurses. We care. Help us to expand our network of hope and help. To donate, Simply use Givelify or the Zelle app on your cell phone or on your computer. Transfer funds from your account to STJC using our email address. Click the link in the post or send a check or money order to the church. Join us in showing we care by calling friends, family, neighbors, young adults, seniors, and children just to check on them. God bless you and thank you for caring. Hi, I'm Pastor Al. We're so excited because in the midst of darkness, despair, we have a campaign of hope. We have designed a mask saying BDA, brighter days ahead, found in Job the 11th chapter, the 17th verse. 
For the mask, it's only $10 plus a dollar for shipping. Won't you join us and spread a message of hope? A classic and at the same time progressive. Welcome to the King's Table. <laughs> you into this service. May your word be edified. Now use me, Lord, until you use me up. In Jesus' precious name, and the church said, Amen. Our text is taken from the book of Jeremiah, the eighth chapter, the twentieth verse in I V the harvest is past 
the summer has ended and we're still not saved. God's word for the people of God and the people of God said, thanks be to God. When you see a rat running into the fire, know that what it is running away from is hotter than the fire. Mm. An African proverb. Children love to ride the merry-go-round. The ride lasts for just a moment. It is slow and predictable. It goes around and around. Then it stops. Is that not like life? Life will take us around and around and then stop. If you're not careful, life can become like one big amusement park with merry-go-rounds, bumper cars, and roller coasters. You will have your ups and downs, curves, twists, and constant feelings of going around and around, going nowhere. In the backdrop of our text, the prophet Jeremiah, sometimes called the weeping prophet, is found weeping over his people. The children of Jerusalem for their lives are destined for death, gloom, and destruction. In our text, the words, the harvest is past, meaning another year of suffering and despair for the Israelites. There are no crops to gather for the harvest because of the severe famine. Oh, the summer was just as bad and now it has ended. There is no fruit to gather. We're in the same predicament like before. We're like that old gospel dusty. You've got me going around in circles, round and around it goes. We are just not saved. Think with me on the subject, saved. That's right, saved. The Israelites were like many of us, stuck in the past, stuck in our rituals and traditions and going nowhere fast. In the Israelites' theology, Jesus Christ wasn't their Lord and Savior. So how could they obtain true salvation? Only God can change the direction of our spiritual merry-go-round. And that takes a personal decision from you. You see, salvation is medicine for the sick. It's for a dying kingdom of the Lord. Thus, we shall seize the moment. Oh, the text suggests that with Christ, we can overcome the same old, same old. Oh, with Christ, we can overcome spiritual sickness. Oh, with Christ, we can overcome our sins. The doctor is in. And we can be saved. Saved. With Christ, we can overcome the same Oh, same old. Verse 20. But for us, nothing has changed. The Israelites were stuck in a rut. God delivered them 
freed them, liberated them from a life of bondage and slavery. He performed mighty miracles before their eyes. He defeated their enemies. He allowed them to occupy the promised land. And they don't trust him. They fail to surrender to him and are willing to accept his salvation for their weary soul. They wonder why they are in the same predicament as before. Oh, if you don't know me by now, you will never, never know me. We are not saved. Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the 20th verse reads, there's not one who is truly pure and sinless. But with Christ, we can overcome. One of the amusing things in the world is to see a young puppy fascinated with his tail. He chases it around and around and then finally gets tired and takes a nap. We are a lot like that puppy. We love the chase. Then we get tired and stop and take a nap. But have we really accomplished anything? With Christ, we can overcome the same old, same old. Saved. With Christ, we can overcome spiritual sickness. Verses 18 and 22. I drown in grief. I'm heartsick for my dear broken people. I'm heartbroken. I weep, seized by grief. Is there no healing ointment in Gilead? The Israelites are guilty of repeating their sins without repentance. When we use the word sorry, that's only for a moment. Repentance, on the other hand, means turning away from sin. Is there anyone or anything that you need to turn away from? Thus, their pain. Their suffering, their sorrow, their tears continues to be recycled over and over and over again because there is no conviction, no comfort, no peace. Luke, the fourth chapter, the 18th verse reads, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed. We worry about the symptoms of COVID-19 killing us. But the fall of Adam and Eve there is real danger and it's been going on for years. It's like a spiritual roller coaster. Thus, we continue the cycle of spiritual sickness with death, suicide, and despair. There is hopelessness and the Lord knows our silent scream. Only the Lord can help us overcome our spiritual blues, our spiritual sickness. Saved. With Christ, you can be healed of your sins. The doctor is in. Verse 22. And there is no healing ointments in Gilead. Is there a doctor in the house? 
Why can't something be done to heal and save my dear people? Is there no balm in Gilead, NIV? Oh yes, God can help and heal them. If sinners die of their wounds, their blood is upon their heads. Oh, the blood of Christ is that balm in Gilead. His spirit is the physician there. The doctor is in. Oh, the doctor is in to heal to save, to redeem, to deliver, to restore, to love, to forgive. The doctor is in. And that's why James, the fifth chapter, the 15th verse reads, believing prayer will heal you and Jesus will put you on your feet. And if you have sinned, you'll be forgiven, healed, inside out. Oh, there's a story about 10 lepers who wanted to be healed. They wanted to be healed by Jesus. He healed all 10, but one came back just to say thank you. And the Bible says that one was both healed and saved. All oh, adapted from Luke the 17th chapter, verses 11 through the 19th verse. With Christ, you can be healed. The sins can be healed. Save. Oh, Jesus saves. Jesus saves from the cross to the graves. You died for me. The ultimate sacrifice for me had never seen So my voice raised and testified that Jesus saves Jesus saves Tasha Leonard Cobb penned those words Save, oh Jesus Christ doesn't want this to be your last chance He died and was resurrected from an empty tomb To give us another chance Saved the Israelites in our text failed to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and the prophet Jeremiah couldn't pray them through oh he couldn't fight to get them through he could not cry them through and the final decision was theirs don't let this moment pass saved in closing Bishop Philip Brooks became quite ill and would not see any visitors but one, Robert Ingersoll. And the agnostic that he was, he heard his friend was sick, called and was allowed to visit. And there he sat bedside, puzzled. And he asked the bishop, why was he allowed to visit? And the other friends were denied. Bishop Brooks, hallelujah, answered and felt confident of seeing them one more time. He says, I, I'll see my friends on the other side. But when it comes to you, this might be the last chance to see you. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. Don't let this be your last chance. Jesus Christ wants to save you. Save. Oh, don't let another harvest pass. Don't let another summer end. And we are not saved. Saved. Believe. Receive. Confess. Repent. Forgive. The Lord will give you hope. The Lord will turn your life around. Saved. 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 Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that something that was said or sung blessed your hearts today. Allow me to offer you four opportunities. The first one, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you want to invite him into your heart today, we call that conversion. 
and you can be saved. The second is that you are desiring to become a member of St. James AME Church in downtown San Antonio, Texas. We would love to have you. Details are in the chat. Thirdly, you say, Reverend, I'm saved. I grew up in the church, but I thought I outgrew the church. I was so wrong. I'm ready to come back home. We call that rededication. Lastly, you say, Reverend, I enjoy you on Facebook Live and YouTube. But that's the only way I see you. I live out of the country. I live out of the states. And I just really have a desire to become a member. How can I do that? Well, we would love to have you. And we call that virtual membership. Details are in the chat. Well, we want to thank you for your love and your generosity in sowing gifts into the ministry of the STJC. If you desire to continue or start, there's an app on your cell phone called Giveify. There's an app on your cell phone called Zelle where you can transfer the funds. Or you may mail your check or money order to the church. Details and the address of the church are in the chat. Well, we want to thank you for a moment of your time. God willing, we'll see you next week. Same time, same station. But remember this one thing. Establish a relationship with Jesus Christ today. Say, say, say. God bless you. See you next week. May the love of the Father, the grace and mercy of the Son, and the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of you now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen.